follow MTD CNC's channel, you'll know we do a lot with Matsura looking at their products. Now, I'm pleased to say and proud to be here talking to the president of the company, uh, Katsu. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. At the end of the day here, the first day at Matsura's open house. And um, firstly, tell us, tell us what you think about this new showroom. I think it's very great. You know, it's, it's white with you know, our blue color. It really stands very well. So. And we, t we talk to uh, UK engineers as well as European ones about Matsura products. Mm -hmm. You're obviously at the helm, you get involved in the design and the development. Um, as it stands at the, Mats uh, at the moment, Matsura really are a leader, aren't they, in, in the products that you supply. Um, why do you think this is? Well, you know, we try to focus on these high valued machines, you know, for making lights out solutions. So, especially for multi-paritization you know, parit machines. Uh, for, you know, right now, you know, there are many, many countries having problem of a lack of skilled people. So this multi parit system with lots of tools you know, can solve this situation to have optimization, etc., etc. So that's how we are kind of focusing on to chase the you know, our, our business. So. Now, it, now, it's no secret in the UK that Matsura are having a phenomenal success with some of the new machines, the MX330, the 520 to mention a few, also the, obviously the, the 4PC 520 now as well. Is that replicated around the world? It is very much so. Because, you know, we focus on this in highly industrial country like UK, Germany and Japan and United States, North America. So. Those requirements from especially from job shop, they want to be staying competitive against you know emerging country. So they need this kind of machine to be competitive enough to, to fight against those countries. So so that's how we see so. Uh, for a bit of background as well for our viewers who may know the machines but don't know much about the origins of the company Matsura. Um, how many people are you employing now in Japan? Well we have four hundred people down there in Japan, so yeah, 400 in, and, and a lot of these machines are hand built, they're crafted in, in, in your factories? That's true. You know, uh, we are much more handcraft oriented you know, manufacturing you know, method. You know, we are building uh, machines. So, uh, uh, well, you know, this has been no change from the beginning of our start uh, of our establishment of Matsura machines. You know. because, because they last many, many years. What's the secret to the success of the longevity of these machines? Well, you know what, you know, my grandfather, who was a founder, he was a, such a you know, factory man, a factory you know, hands-on type of guys. So he put such an effort in making you know, machines longevity uh, and so forth, you know, the details and you know, scraping, etc., etc. This is extra you know, uh, uh, chaos can be actually uh, giving us a, such a, an uh, advantage right now. So Matsura's in, in our reputation of longevity of machines. So. I, I also feel that you've become very competitive in recent years. I'm not suggesting that your machines were expensive before, but certainly some of the 520s, the 330, as we've mentioned again already, some of the VMCs, mm -hmm. the price point, um, some people you know, may not believe how low cost a Matsura machine can be, especially when you take into account its efficiency. Well, you know what, is the market is changing, you know, demand and so forth, you know. So, uh, yes, we used to be, had uh, probably uh, reputation, well, 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 kind of uh, perception. Matsura is good machine, but expensive, okay. But we, we're trying to make it different way, you know, different concept, you know, it's a perception. It's a reasonable machine, good machine, but reasonable pricing. Okay, so so we try to kind of uh, uh, accordingly uh, changing the method of production uh, to cope with uh, current demands. You know, uh, price competitive with reasonable specification and then reasonable you know uh, configuration to 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 uh, uh, cope with market demand so and, so and it's working it's working how do your competition keep up with you well you know or can't they <laughs> well you know actually the market dictates you know obviously customers by customer demands okay so so yes commodity type machine will always coming you know chasing you know uh, us you know to drag down in terms of the price point of you know uh, uh, of the machines so so we have to be somehow competitive enough 
In, in order to do that, we need a volume. So that's how we ended up making MX models. So, so we. And, and what does the future hold? What's around the corner? Well, you know, uh, we probably, well, we most probably still going for five axis machine center solution with lights out, you know, technology. So more pallets, more tools, but need more, how to say, uh, uh, kind of intelligent, intelligent, you know, uh, approach to uh, uh, to get more productivity and, and so uh, so it's down to the intelligence of the machines keeping the machines running uh, being able to make them equally as reliable and last as long and as precise probably all of those things that's what it is you're right so so but you know to do that it's it's not that easy you know you know it's yes IT technology is there but uh, uh, we are focusing on much more on practical side of, especially for job shop oriented, how they can be competitive enough to, to, to uh, uh, make components in, in kind of light way, let's say, in our, our customer needs. So. Well, you're certainly making good inroads into that. Thank you very much for your time today, Katsu. Enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, I know we're, we're pretty much wrapping up here today, but enjoy coming back tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul.